Welcome to our first class. I would like to cover some PHP basics in order to give you an overview of the language. Many of the concepts I will present we will cover in more detail. Let's take a look at traditional web architecture. When the browser requests a file from the server, if the browser is requesting a static file, such as an HTML file, the server will return that file to the browser. However, if the file has an extension such as PHP, meaning it is a dynamic file, the server will recognize that extension and it will process that file first. That processing can include working with a database server. So it just does not send the file back. It processes it and then sends everything back as HTML. Remember, the browser only understands HTML, whereas the server understands and interprets and processes the PHP. So PHP, which stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor, is a server-sided language which is used to build dynamic websites. The most popular version is still 5.6, although 7.0 has recently been released, skipping over version 6. Remember, the file is executed on the server, not on the browser. Therefore, in order to learn how to use PHP, you need to work with a server environment, such as XAMPP, which can be installed on your computer or work on a live server. Your code will be stored in a HTML file with a PHP extension. The server relies on the file extension to know whether to process it or to just send it back as a static page. When you install a XAMPP environment, you will be storing all of your web pages on the server root, which is a folder called htdocs. On the server, you may have a htdocs folder, or a ww folder, or a ww root folder, or a very commonly used public underscore html. This is the root for your websites. On your local computer, you will test them in the browser using the word localhost. In order to find out more about which version of PHP you have installed and other information, you can execute the PHP info function. So let's look at how we write PHP code. PHP code is enclosed in PHP tags. This code can go anywhere in the document and can exist in several locations in that same document. The code will be placed inside an opening tag and a closing tag. There is a shortened version which is not recommended used due to its support in various platforms. So here we have the syntax of a line of PHP code where we have our opening and closing delimiters. Just like with an HTML document, white space is ignored. Now we have this echo command or function and a literal. This is our proverbial hello world application. PHP statements end in a semicolon, and this is required or you will receive an error message. So this is an example of how we might place some PHP inside an HTML element. Unlike languages such as JavaScript, 
where it is not recommended to embed code inside the document. With PHP, you do because it is interpreted and processed and converted into pure HTML. I would like to draw your attention to the HTML special cars function. And what this does, in the event that someone is trying to do something malicious to your site, it will convert any special characters to the character entity code, therefore presenting, preventing what is commonly known as cross-site scripting. Echo and print are commonly used commands. Essentially, they do the same thing they output to the page. These functions are not case sensitive. However, the PHP language is with respect to variables. The echo and print functions can take parameters that are enclosed in parentheses, although it is not required. You can use single or double quotes if you are using literal expressions. There are several different ways to use comments in PHP. We have two variations for single line comments. We also have a multiple line comment. And you can also place comments inside of code. So here we have a sample PHP file. A very simple hello world. There are three parts to this. The first part is the actual HTML file which has a .php extension. Notice inside the HTML document we have our opening and closing delimiters and our echo statement. When this is launched in the browser from localhost, you will see the rendered web, web page. However, if you look at the source code, the view source in the browser, you will not see any PHP. You will see the generated result. You will never see PHP in the view source. You can only see it in the raw file. PHP has several data types similar to those found in the JavaScript language. We have strings, which are text literals, integers, floats, which are also called doubles, boolean array objects and nulls. Similar to JavaScript, PHP is a loosely typed language, which means the data type is inferred based on the value assigned to the variable. Let's take a look at some examples of the different data types. Here we have integers, which include whole numbers, including negatives. We have doubles, which would include a decimal point. We have Boolean true-false. We have strings. Strings can be indicated with a single quote, a double quote. We also have an empty string and a null value. Variables are the building blocks of all programming language. They serve as a placeholder for a value that we know or will know at some point in the future. In the PHP language, variables must always begin with a dollar sign. And the first character after the dollar sign cannot be a number. No spaces or punctuation marks except the underscore are allowed. So essentially, you're looking at letters and numbers. Here again, variables are case sensitive. Variables are assigned using the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. However, there is no keyword that we need to use similar to the JavaScript language. So here we see an example of declaring a variable and assigning a value. The PHP language also has constants which cannot be changed. And they are created using the define function. Here again we will revisit this in depth in a future chapter. Again, variables do not have a declaration keyword. 
They use the assignment operator. A text literal can have single or double quotations. Numbers are not quoted. Again, it is a loosely typed language. The data type is inferred from the way the data is handled and assigned. If you wanted to see which data type PHP might be inferring, you can use the var dump function and it will return the data type and the value. We have escape sequences in PHP. A new line or a carriage return tab and backspace. Because PHP converts the code into HTML, these escape sequences affect the view source, not the actual page. If you want to go down to a new line in the web page, you need a BR element as that is HTML. And there is a history behind these with respect to the operating system used. However, you commonly see developers using both backslash R, backslash N, um, because they are cross-platform. We also have predefined variables in PHP that hold a special value. Here again, we will revisit them in the near future. We also have predefined variables that start with the dollar underscore server, giving us information about the server. Here again, we will revisit this in the future. Let's take a look at some string expressions. It is recommended to use single quotes to improve PHP efficiency. So here we see a string value being assigned. You also can assign an empty string or a null value. If you do use double quotes, what it will do it will actually allow you to display the value for a variable without having to do any concatenation, which you might have to do in another language. And this is actually a very nice contribution that PHP has for us. Here again, you can also mix single and double quotes for special purposes. In PHP, the concatenation operator is the period, not the plus sign. So if we wanted to concatenate, this is how we would do it. The PHP code can be placed anywhere in the HTML document. However, because it is placed inside the HTML document, there might be more efficient places to put it with respect to managing your code. However, it works pretty much anywhere. So if we wanted to place this code here with our variable declarations and our echo statements right inside the body, we could. However, we might want to put our variable declarations at the top of the page because we don't really need that in our HTML document. What we do need in the HTML document is the echo statements because we want to display a message in the browser. You can also place PHP code directly inside an HTML element, in between them, and also inside them as we will see in the future. In the PHP language we have arithmetic operators and assignment operators. Here again the assignment operator is the equal sign and we have the traditional plus minus asterisk division and modulus. We also have um, for addition the plus equal, minus equal, asterisk equals as a shorthand. The order of precedence is pretty much similar to that for most languages. And here again, the use of parentheses will also dictate 
the order of precedence. We also have compound assignment operators. We did look at the plus equal, minus equal, multiplication, division, and modulus, and these are for numeric expressions. However, if you wanted to build a string, you would need period equals. The PHP language has compound and relational operators. Equal to, or the same as, not equal to, or not the same, greater than, less than, etc. And we have logical operators, and, or, and not. PHP has many functions for formatting and checking both numbers and strings. And we will look at these in the future. PHP has if statements, a single if and multiple ifs. PHP has loops. Here we have a while loop and a for loop. There are also some functions that pass control to another file. A very common one is an include and require. We can also exit out of a script. Here again, we will look at these in the future.